from around the globe. It's the Cube with digital coverage of Veeam on 2020. Brought to you by Veeam. Everybody, we're back. This is Dave Vellante, and you're watching the Cube's continuous coverage of Veeam on 2020. Veeam Online 2020, and Danny Allen is here. He's the CTO and Senior Vice President of Product Strategy, and he's joined by Anton Gustav, who's the Senior Vice President of Product Management. Gentlemen, good to see you again. Wish we were face to face, but thanks for coming on virtually. Thanks, Dave, for coming on. I always on. love being on with you. Thank you. So, Danny, I want to start with you. Um, in your keynote, you talked, you had a great quote by Satya Nadella. He said, we basically compressed two years of digital transformation in, in two months. Right, and so I'm interested in what that meant for Veeam, but also specifically for your customers and how you help. Yeah, I think about that in two different ways. So digital transformation is obviously the, the word that he used, but I think of this a lot about uh, being remote. So in, in two months, every organization in the world, ourselves included, has gone from in-person operations, going into the office doing things, to enabling remote operations, and so, you know, I'm working from home today, Anton's working from home today, we're all working from home today. And so remote operations is a big part of that. And it's not just working from home, it's how do I actually conduct my operations, my backup, my archiving, my peering, all of those things remotely. It's actually changed the way organizations think about their data management. Not just operations from the sense of internal processes, but also external processes as well. So I think about this as remote offering. So organizations say, how can I take where we are today in the world and turn this into a competitive advantage? How can I take the services that I offer today and help my customers to be more successful remotely? And so it has those two aspects to it, remote operations, remote offerings, um, and of course, all driven by data, which Veeam protects. So Anton, you know, there's a saying, it's better to be lucky than, than good. And I say it's best to be lucky and good. So Danny was talking about uh, so, you know, some of the external processes. A lot of those processes were unknown uh, and people kind of making them up as they went along, uh, with things that we've never seen before. So I wonder if you could talk about your product suite and how mm -hmm. well you were able to adapt to some of these unknowns. Mm -hmm. Well, it's more customers using our product in creative ways, but uh, one feedback we got, uh, most recently in our annual uh, user survey is that I really like. Uh, one of the customers was using uh, tape as the offsite backups, uh, and they had the process where obviously someone had to, to physically come to the office, pick up the exported tapes and put them on the truck and move them to some offsite location, right? And so uh, this uh, basically, the process was completely broken with COVID because of lockdown. And in that particular country, it was a stricter lockdown than in most, and they were physically unable to basically leave the home. So they basically looked at, uh, luckily they upgraded already to version 10, and they looked at what version 10 has to offer, and they were able to switch from using tape to fully automating this offsite backup and going directly to, to the public cloud, to object storage, right? So they still have the same offsite backups uh, that are effectively air-gapped because of the functionality you provide in version 10 for mutual backups. As soon as they create it, they automatically ship to object storage, completely replacing this manual of site tape process. So uh, I don't know how long it would take them, if not COVID, to move through this process. Now they, they love it because it's so much better than what they did before. That's amazing. Yeah, I'll bet, right? no doubt. Yeah. That's interesting, that's an interesting use case. Did you, do you see yeah. other use cases that popped up? Again, I was saying that these processes were new. I mean. Um, and I'm interested in, in, from a product standpoint, how you guys were able to adapt to that. Well, another use case that seems to be on the rise is that uh, the ability for customers to deploy the new machines to procure new hardware is severely limited now, right? Not only there are supply chain issues, but also, again, to bring something into your data center, uh, you have to physically be there and collaborate with other you know, workers and to install the, the, whatever new hardware you purchased, right? So we see a significant pickup of the functionality that we had in the product for a while, which we call direct restore to cloud. So we support taking any backup uh, physical virtual machine, right? And restoring directly into cloud machines. So we see uh, really the big uptick of migration, maybe not the migrations, maybe, you know, not necessarily permanent migrations, but when uh, people want
want to uh, basically the, some of the applications start to struggle on resources and they're unable to update the underlying hardware. So what they do is they, they schedule the downtime uh, and then migrate, uh, restore that latest backup into the cloud and continue using the machine in the cloud on much more powerful hardware. That's a lifesaver for them, obviously, in this situation. Yeah, so the cloud, Danny, is becoming a linchpin of these kind of new models. In your keynote, you, you, you talked about your vision, and it's interesting to note, I mean, Veeam on, uh, last year you actually talked about what I call getting back to the basic. Uh, you know, backup, you kind of embrace backup, where a lot of the new entrants are like, no, no, backup's just one small part, it's data management, and so I'd love to sort of get your thoughts on that, but the, but the vision you laid out was, you know, backup and cloud data management. Maybe you could sort of unpack that a little bit. Yeah, the way I think about this is step one, in every infrastructure, it doesn't matter whether you're talking about on-prem or in the cloud, step one is, is to protect your data. So this is ingesting the data, whether it be backup, whether it be replication, whether it be, you know, long-term retention. We have to do that. Not only do we have to do that, but as you go to new cycles of infrastructure, it happens all over again. So we, you know, we backed up physical first and then virtual, and then we did, you know, cloud. And in some ways, you know, containers were going towards, we're not going backwards, but people who are running containers on-prem. So we always go back to the starting point of protect the data. And then of course, after you protect it, then you you want to effectively begin to manage it. And that's exactly what Anton said. How do you automate the operational procedures to be able to make this part of the DNA of the organization. And so it doesn't matter whether it's on-prem or whether it's in the cloud, that protection of data and then the effective management and integration with existing processes is fundamental for every infrastructure and will continue to be so into the future, including the cloud. And it, it's only then when you have this uh, effective protection and management of it, can you begin to unleash the power of data as you look out into the future because you can reuse the data for additional purposes, you can you can move it to the optimal location, but we always start with protection and management of the data. So, so Anton, I, I want to sort of come back to you on this notion of cloud being a, a, key, a key portion of that. You know, when you talk about security, people say you layer. How do we, should we think about the cloud? Is it a, is it a, another layer of, of protection? And then Danny just said, you know, it doesn't really matter whether it's on-prem or in the cloud. It, well, it doesn't matter if you can ensure the same experience. If it's a totally different experience, well, then it's problematic. So um, I wonder if you could, could address sort of both the layers, is cloud just another layer? And is the management of that actually you know, how do you make it quote unquote seamless? I know it's an overused word, but from a product standpoint. Uh, well, uh, for larger customers, it's not necessarily a new challenge because uh, it's rare when the customer had a single data center, right? And uh, they had this challenge for always, right? How do you manage my multiple data centers with a, a single pane of glass? And uh, I would say public cloud is not necessarily in at some some new perspective in, in 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 that sense, right? Yeah, maybe it's even makes it easier because you no longer have to manage the physical uh, the most important aspect of security, which is physical security, right? So someone else else manages it for you, and probably much better than most companies could ever afford in terms of securing access to their data center, right? But as far as uh, networking security and how those multiple data centers in, interact with each other, that's essentially not a new challenge, right? It is a new challenge for smaller customers, for SMBs that are just starting, so they had their own small data center, small world, and now they're starting to move some workloads into the cloud. And I would say the biggest problem there is networking, and we actually provide some free tools, we call it VPN, to make it easier for them to make this first step of securing, securing the networking aspect of, uh, of the hybrid cloud, that the hybrid cloud reality that they in now is, is workloads move to the cloud, but also keeping some workloads on-prem. Mm -hmm. you know, the other piece of cloud, Danny, is, is SaaS. You guys were, if, if you weren't the first, you were one of the first to offer SaaS backup, particularly for Office 365. And, and a lot of people just, I think, rely on the SaaS vendor. Hey, they've got me covered, they've got me backed up. And you know, maybe they do have them backed up, but they might not have them recovered. How, <laughs> how is that market shaping up? What are the trends that you're seeing there? 
Well, you're absolutely right, Dave, that the, the focus here is not just on backup, but on recovery. And it's one of the things that Veeam is known for. We don't just do the backup, but we have an explorer for Exchange, an explorer for SharePoint, an explorer for OneDrive. You saw on stage today, we demoed the explorer for Microsoft Teams. So it's not just about protecting the data, but getting back the specific element of data that you need for operations. And that is critically important, and our customers expect and need that. If you're depending on, on the, the SaaS vendor themselves to do that, um, I, and I won't you know, be derogatory or, or specific about any SaaS vendor, but what they'll often do is, is take the entire data set from seven days ago, we'll say, and merge it back into the current data set. And that just results in you know, a, a complete chaos of your inbox if that's what they're merging together. So having specific granularity to pull back that data, exactly the data you need when you need it, is, is critical. And that's why we're adding it. And the focus on Microsoft Teams now, obviously, is because as we have more intellectual property in collaboration tools for remote operations, exactly what we're doing now, that only becomes more critical for the business. So we think about SaaS for backup, but we also think about it for recovery. And one thing that I'll credit Anton and the product management team for, we build all of this in-house. We don't, we don't give this to a third party to build it on our behalf because you need it to work and not only need it work, but need it to work well that's completely integrated with the underlying cloud data management platform. So, so Anton, I wonder if I could ask you about that. So from a recovery standpoint, you know, one thing as Danny was saying, you've got to have the granularity, you've got to be able to uh, have a, a really relatively simple e way to recover. But because it's the cloud, there's you know, latency involved. And how are you, from a product standpoint, dealing with you know, making that, that recovery as consistent and, and kind of predictable and, and reliable as you have for you know, a decade on-prem? So you mean recover, recovery in the cloud or back to on-prem? Yeah, so uh, what's you know, re yeah. Recovery, recovery from data that lives in the cloud. Okay. Uh, so basically, uh, uh, the most important feature of, of any cloud is the, is the cost, is the price of whatever you do. So whenever we design anything, we always look at the cost even more than anything else, but it in turn always translates into better performance as well. To give you an example, with our functionality where we can uh, take the on-prem backup and make a copy in the, ob in the public object storage, for disaster recovery purposes. So that, for example, when uh, a hacker or ransomware wipes out your uh, entire data center, you know the, you have those backups uh, uh, in the cloud and you can restore from them, right? So when you perform the restore from cloud backups, we are actually smart enough to understand that, you know, we need to pull that and this and that block from the cloud backup, but many of those blocks are actually shared uh, with backups in another machines that, uh, in your own prem backup repository. So we do this kind of on the fly analysis and we say, oh, instead of uh, pulling the 10 terabyte of the entire backup from the cloud, we can actually pull only I don't know, 100 gigabytes, right, of unique blocks. And the rest of the blocks we can take from on-prem repositories that uh, still survive the disaster, right? So not only reduces the cost 20 times or whatever, right? The performance obviously of restoring from on-prem data versus pulling everything from the cloud through the internet links is, is dramatic, right? So again, we started from the cost. How do we reduce the cost of restore? Because that's where uh, cloud vendors, quote unquote, get you, right? But in the end, it resulted in much better performance as well. Excellent. Uh, Anton, as well in your keynote, you talked about the Veeam availability suite, gave a little sneak, sneak preview. Uh, you talked about uh, continuous uh, data protection, you know, cloud tier, NAS recovery, which is oftentimes very challenging. Uh, mm -hmm. What should we take away from that sneak peek? Uh, three main directions, basically. The first is Veeam CGP. Is, uh, we keep investing a lot in on-prem, uh, data protection, disaster recovery. Uh, this VMware is a clear leader of on-prem virtualization, so we, provide, we keep building this new ways to protect VMware VMs with lower RPOs and RPOs that were never possible before with the classic snapshotting technologies. So that's one thing, uh, we keep investing in on-prem. Uh, second thing, we do major investments in the cloud in, uh, and object storage specifically. Uh, in, from that regards, again, to recap the keynote, we're adding Google Cloud support 
and we are adding the ability to work with coldest tier of uh, object storage, which is Amazon Glacier, Deep Archive, or Microsoft Azure Blob Storage Archive tier. Uh, so that's our uh, second uh, big area of investment. And third, uh, instant recovery. Vim has always been extremely uh, well known for its instant recovery capabilities, and you know this big release. This release is going to be the biggest in terms of new re instant recovery capabilities, and uh, we will introduce as many as three new major capabilities there for instant recovery. So, Danny, I wonder if I could ask you. I'm, I'm interested in how you go from sort of product strategy to actual product management and and bring things to market. I mean, you know, in the early days, days Vim. Uh, very, very specific to virtualization. Uh, that of course went to bare metal. You've got a number of permutations and, and product capabilities. How do you, how do you guys work together uh, in terms of assessing the market potential, the degree of difficulty, prioritizing? How does that all come to, you know, customer value? Well, first of all, Anton and I spend a lot of time together on the phone and collaborating just on a weekly basis um, about where we're going, what we're going to do. But I always say there's kind of four directions that we look at for the product strategy and what we're building. You look behind you, you have a, you know, we have 375,000 customers. And so that those are the tailwinds that are pushing you forward. We, we talk to them on all segments. What is it that you want? I say we look left and right, so left to our alliance. So we have a rich ecosystem of partners and, and channel that we look to, to, to collect feedback from. Um, look right, we look out at the, the competitors in the space, what are they doing? Make sure that uh, we're not missing anything that we should be including, and then look forward. Big focus of Aveen has always been not just creating checkboxes and making sure that we have the required features, but innovation, and, and you saw that on stage today when. Anton was showing the NAS instant recovery in the database instant recovery and the capabilities that we have. We have a big focus on not just checking a box, but actually doing things better and differently than everyone else in the industry. And that served us incredibly well. So I, I love that framework. But so now when you think about this pandemic, uh, you look behind your customers have obviously been affected. Your partners have been affected. You know, let's put your competitors to the side for a minute. We'll see how they respond, but then looking forward, future, as I've said many times, we're not just going back to 2019, we're in a new decade, and, and really digital transformation is, is becoming real, for real this time around. So as you think mm -hmm. about the, the pandemic and looking at those four dimensions, what initial conclusions are you drawing? Well, the first one would be that, that Veeam is well positioned to win, continue to win, and to win into the future. And the reason for that, I would argue, is that we're software defined. Our whole model is based on being simple to use, obviously, but software defined. And because of the pandemic, as Anton said, you can't go into the office anymore to switch your, tips, your, uh, your tapes from one system to another. And so being software defined sets us apart and positions us well for the future. And so make it simple, make it flexible. And ultimately what our customers care about is the reliability of this. And to the credit of research and development, Anton's team is we have product that, as everyone says, it just works. Yeah, so Anton, I wonder if I could ask you kind of a similar you know, question. How, how has the pandemic affected your thinking along those those dimensions and maybe some of your initial thinking on, on changes that you'll implement. Yeah, sorry, I wanted to add exactly on that. I would say the pandemic accelerated the, our vision becoming the reality, right? Uh, I, basically the vision we had, and I said a few years ago, and when Danny joined, that Veeam will become the biggest storage vendor without selling a single storage box, right? And this is just becoming the reality, right? Uh, we support almost infinite number of object storage providers today, right? Only a few of them actually track the consumption that is generated by different vendors. And just for those few who do track that and report numbers to us, right? We're already managing over hundreds of petabytes of data in the cloud, right? And we only just started a couple of years ago with object storage support. So uh, that's the power of software defined, right? We don't, we don't need, um, we needed to sell you any storage to be eventually the biggest storage player on the market, right? And uh, pandemic is clearly accelerated that in the last three months we see the adoption. It was already like a hockey stick, but it's accelerating further 
because of the issues customers are facing due to unable to actually physically go back to the office and you know do this uh, backup handling the way they normally do it. Well, guys, it's been really fun the last decade watching the ascendancy of Veeam. We've reported mm -hmm. on it and talked about it a lot. And, and as you guys have both said, things have been accelerated. It's, it's actually very exciting to see a company with you know, rich legacy, but also very competitive with some of the, 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 the new products and new companies that are hitting the market. So congratulations. I, I know you got a lot more to do here. Uh, you guys are, have been, you know, for a private company, pretty transparent, more transparent than most. And I have to say, as an analyst, we appreciate that and uh, appreciate uh, the partnership with theCUBE. So thanks very much for coming on. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dave. Always thanks, a pleasure. Dave. All right, and thank thanks, you for Dave. watching everybody. This is Dave Vellante for theCUBE and our coverage of Veeam on 2020, Veeam Online. Keep it right there, be right back.